Hemostasis is the process of forming clots in the walls of damaged blood vessels and preventing blood loss. Hemostasis can be divided into three events, vascular spasm, plated plaque formation, and coagulation. Coagulation can also be divided into three pathways, the intrinsic, extrinsic, and the common pathway. Vascular spasm is the initial response, and it refers to immediate response to blood vessel injury. Damage to the vessel endothelium exposes collagen to the blood, and plated stick to collagen and activate the racing serotonin and adenosine diphosphate. Serotonin is known to be a strong vasoconstrictor, therefore constricts blood vessels, reducing flow to the injured area. The second step is platelet plug formation, and it's the process by which platelets adhere to each other to form a platelet plug which closes minute vascular holes. Platelets come into contact with collagen fibers in the damaged vessel and are activated to swell, form pseudopods, become contracted, and become sticky, attracting more and more platelets. As part of the normal activities, small blood vessels often break and platelet plug is usually sufficient to stop bleeding. Coagulation, also known as clotting, it is the process where soluble fibrinogen is converted to insoluble fibrin. The conversion of fibrinogen to fibrin is characterized by thrombin. Thrombin is a serine protease that is formed from each circulating precursor known as prothrombin by the action of activated factor 10 or prothrombin activator. Factor 10 can be activated by reactions in eight of the two systems, the intrinsic or extrinsic system. Intrinsic pathway The initial reaction in the intrinsic system is the conversion of inactive factor 12 to activated factor 12. And this occurs when the blood is exposed to collagen fibers underlying the endothelium in the blood vessels. Active factor 12 then activates factor 11 and the active factor 11 activates factor 9. Activated factor 9 forms a complex with active factor 8 which is activated when it is separated from the von Willebrand factor. The complex of factor 11 and activated factor 8 activate factor 10. Phospholipids from aggregated platelets and calcium ions are necessary for full activation of the factor 10. Extrinsic system or pathway. The extrinsic system is triggered by the release of tissue thromboplastin with a protein phospholipid mixture. Thromboplastin activates factor 7 and the activated factor 7 activates factor 10 in the presence of phospholipids and calcium ions. The extrinsic pathway is inhibited by a tissue factor pathway inhibitor that forms a quaternary structure with TPL and factor 7 activated factor 10. The final common pathway. Prothrombin activator in presence of calcium factor 5 and phospholipids catalyzes the conversion of prothrombin to thrombin. Thrombin acts as an enzyme that cleaves fibrinogen into sticky and insoluble fibrin monomers. The process involves the release of two pairs of peptidoglycans from each fibrinogen molecule and in presence of factor 13, the calcium ions, the remaining portion fibrin monomer then polymerizes with another monomer molecule to form stable fibrin. The retraction of platelet pseudopodia causes clot to contract to about 40% of its original size, becoming tougher and more elastic. This retraction draws edges of the wound together, and a fluid called serum, that is plasma minus fibrinogen and prothrombin, is squeezed out of the clot. The coagulation requires many clotting factors and enzymatic reactions. Vitamin K, which is found in green vegetables and also formed by intestinal bacteria, necessary for production of prothrombin. If by chance vitamin K is missing from the diet, hemorrhagic bleeding disorders develop in patients. The dissolution of a clot and inhibitors of clotting. 
Clot is destroyed by a breakdown of fibrin by protonolus fibrinolysis. Fibrin is broken down by plasmin, which is formed by the plasminogen that is activated by thrombin and plasminogen activator. Plasminogen activators include urokinase, and anticlotting factors include heparin, which is formed by mast cells in combination with antithrombin 3, which is a powerful antithrombin. We have prostacycline and nitric oxide from the endothelium. Thrombomodulin from endothelial cells binds thrombin, and this complex activates protein C, which is ecofactor protein S, and activates factor 5 and factor 8. Anti-clotting mechanisms. As in most systems in the body, there is a balance between mechanisms that facilitate and the mechanisms that inhibit specific function. While the described clotting mechanisms facilitate, there are built-in mechanisms that inhibit clotting process and dissolve the clots that do form. Both clotting and clotting mechanisms are equally important. We have a number of mechanisms involved in the anti-clotting process. These mechanisms include removal of the clotting factors by the liver and reduction of the supply of clotting factors as they get used. Although some enzymes secreted platelets potentiate aggregation of platelets, other enzymes in the blood vessel walls inhibit platelet clamping. Antithrombin 3 is a substance placed in plasma that inhibits active form of clotting factors 9, 10, 11, and factor 12. The endothelial cells and white blood cells secrete a substance called prostacycline which inhibits plated addition and release. Masters and basophys secrete anticoagulant heparin. This fibrinolytic breakdown of fibrin mechanisms also rely on cascade of reactions similar to the clotting mechanisms illustrated. Some of the factors involved in preventing clotting have been isolated and are used to treat patients with myocardial infarction. Anticoagulants. Anticoagulants are often given to individuals with tendons of forming thrombus. These anticoagulants inhibit vitamin K and stimulate a building system which prevent clotting inside the blood vessels. A well-known drug which is also found natural is heparin and this activates the activity of antithrombin 3 retarding thrombus formation. Streptokinase which is an enzyme produced by bacteria is fibrinolytic and used as an anticoagulant. If blood must be stored outside the body, Substances which remove calcium are introduced to prevent clotting. Because calcium is involved in muscle contraction, it is not feasible to prevent clotting by removing calcium from the blood when it is inside the body. Although lack of clotting factors result in bleeding, position to clotting process its own problems. Formation of clots attached to the walls of blood is called thrombosis. The clots are known as thrombus or in plural thrombi. The danger of thrombus formation is the possibility of dislodgement of bits of clot or an emboli, which then can travel to the circulatory system, blocking major blood vessels and cutting blood supply to the important organs. Emboli could also cause stroke, myocardial infarction, and other conditions. And thrombosis tends to occur in areas where the blood flow is sluggish, such as the veins of the legs after surgery and prolonged inactivity, or in vessels which are injured or having a regular cholesterol plex inside. It could also start from conditions such as arteriosclerosis which facilitate coagulation of the blood.